Hey everyone! I know it's been a lot more than a week since I last appeared. Uh, that's partly because I was moving to a new office and lost my former recording space. But on the plus side, I have this cool new uh, space with a blue backdrop. Uh, and I hope to get back onto a more regular uploading schedule uh, now that I'm settled in. So to kick things back off again, I want to talk about something that's been on my mind ever since a few days ago. I gave an interview to Vice Magazine, which I think is coming out next month, and the topic was connections between uh, artificial intelligence and rationality. And I think this is a fascinating topic because there are a bunch of pretty prof profound connections. They're not direct causal connections, so it's not like scientists who study human rationality are mining the field of AI for insights. But rather, I claim, there is this set of theoretical fields like probability theory and logic and decision theory that have uh, jointly inspired both AI and rationality. Um, and specifically, they've inspired what's called normative rationality, which is the study of uh, theoretical models of how an ideal reasoner, an ideal decision maker, would operate in, a, in the kind of situations that humans face. So. Uh, inferring causal relationships, for example, or predicting the future um, based on past data. And on the other hand, we have descriptive rationality, which is the study of how humans actually reason and make decisions. What kinds of um, quick and dirty heuristics does the brain tend to use? And it's interesting to hold uh, descriptive and normative rationality up against each other and notice uh, where does the human brain deviate from these kind of ideal logical uh, algorithms. Um, and that's the, the domain of what's called prescriptive rationality. What strategies could we use to close that gap? And that's what I'm interested in. Um, but that's all sort of a preamble. What I wanted to talk about today is a specific example, which has to do with how the, uh, an AI versus the human brain uh, handles interconnected beliefs or interconnected, uh, interdependent probabilities. So in an AI, uh, in many AIs, uh, use what's called a Bayes net, which is a way to represent interdependent probabilities. For example, you could imagine having three variables. One, did a person get into an Ivy League school like Harvard? Two, does the person have an abnormally high IQ? And three, is the person a legacy at Harvard? Meaning, did one of their parents or grandparents go to Harvard? Which is something that schools like Harvard use in their admissions decisions. So these probabilities are related in the sense that if you found out that this person got into Harvard, that should increase the probabilities you put on both them having a high IQ and also them being a legacy. And then also, if you found out additionally that they are a legacy, that should correspondingly reduce the probability that you put on them having a high IQ. And in a Bayes net, when you change one probability on one of those variables, that change propagates to the other variable, so the probabilities on the related variables automatically update. And it's interesting to compare this process to how it works in a human brain, uh, because it's very different. So, uh, for example, let's say you grew up believing in the truth of some religion, and, and like any religion, there are a bunch of secondary beliefs and values that are um, implications of or outgrowths of that uh, belief in the religion. For example, one such secondary belief might be a belief that sex outside of marriage is wrong or sinful. So, Imagine that you, at some point in your 20s, end up deconverting, and so you no longer believe that this religion is likely to, to be true. If you were an AI, that change would automatically propagate to all of the related beliefs, all of the beliefs that uh, stem from or depend on the original belief in the religion's truth. So, assuming you didn't have any other reasons originally to believe that sex outside of marriage was wrong, the credence that you put in that secondary belief should drastically um, you know, be downgraded. That's not what happens in practice, though, right? We carry around all sorts of orphaned beliefs, as I call them, um, beliefs whose original source is no longer relevant or, you know, outdated, but we still believe this outgrowth. In other words, changes to one belief don't automatically propagate to related beliefs in a human brain. Um, and I understand why this is. Like, it would be very computationally expensive for a human brain to work like an AI. Uh, if every time you learned a new piece of information about the world, you had to update um, not only the directly relevant belief, but all of the interconnected beliefs that are even tangentially related, uh, that would be intractable. So, you know, I'm not, by pointing this out, I'm not arguing that humans should try to be exactly like AIs, uh, or even that we could. I just think it's an important property of the brain to be aware of. 
that you can and probably do have a bunch of these orphaned beliefs kicking around in your brain um, that cause your, your own network of beliefs to be internally inconsistent. Um, and this can be especially important to be aware of in cases where the stakes are you know, medium to high. Uh, to give you a, a recent example from my own life that's maybe somewhat less momentous than that, the religion example, but still, uh, I, so I, I have this organization, we run workshops about rationality, and a couple years ago there was an article, a reporter came to one of our workshops, and just in passing in the article, he mentioned that uh, he didn't like how hygienic, or overly hygienic maybe he said, the workshop was. And I read that and I assumed he must be referring to the fact that we were strongly encouraging people to use hand sanitizer on the logic that, you know, 40 people in a small space for four days, um, it can spread germs. So we put out the hand sanitizers and encourage people to use them. But he didn't like that. So I, I you know, updated my, my credence that in the future we should, we should not pressure people to use hand sanitizers um, so as to avoid making them uncomfortable. And then, a few days later, I found out that I'd totally misinterpreted his article. And when he said hygienic, he was, he was referring to epistemic hygiene. In other words, he didn't like how insistent we were on people being rigorous in their thought processes. So, you know, I was taken aback by this. It's not what I would have expected that would mean, but anyway, good to know. And I went on my way. And then a few months later, we were getting ready to run another workshop. And I went around warning everyone, now remember, don't like, like, go easy on the hand sanitizer advice because we don't want to make people uncomfortable. And someone asked me why I was concerned about that, and I realized, oh wait, the only reason I had to be concerned about that was my, my mistaken belief that this reporter had been made uncomfortable by our hand sanitizer advice. Um, but I deleted that node from my network, or I thought I had, um, and yet somehow that change did not, uh, did not reduce my credence that we should be... Uh, we should be laying off the hand sanitizer advice at future workshops. Um, so maybe that's a trivial example, but it, it, was, it was striking to me how, uh, how sticky these, these orphaned beliefs can be. Uh, I'll leave you with one last uh, uh, a visual metaphor that can, can, I think, help pump your intuition about how it's possible that a human brain can wander around with, with these you know, internally inconsistent belief networks. It's something called a Penrose Triangle, and it's a visual illusion that belongs in this category of illusions called impossible objects. So if you zoom in on the corner of any of the corners of the Penrose Triangle, there's no inconsistency there. Uh, there's no visual paradox at all. But if you zoom out and try to look at all of the corners uh, simultaneously, you'll notice that the, the triangle uh, overlaps itself in a way that creates a physical paradox. Um, but that only becomes apparent when you're looking at all three corners at the same time. And I think that inconsistent beliefs in a human mind work similarly, where uh, if you look at any one or any two beliefs, there's no obvious inconsistency there. And it's only when you put them all next to each other that, and, and hold them all in your mind at the same time that you can see, oh wait, those three things can't all be true, uh, at least one of them must be false. So uh, that's my takeaway, that it's useful to have this concept of Bayes' nets because it helps you understand your own, the ways in which your own brain does not work like a Bayes net, uh, and how that can, can result in carrying around these orphaned beliefs that you maybe no longer have any good reason to believe, um, but your brain hasn't noticed that fact yet, leaving your own network of beliefs looking something like a Penrose triangle.